Hello and welcome to the PropTech Hot Seat on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon, the show where we explore trends and technologies driving innovation across the built environment. This show is brought to you in partnership with PropTech Ireland, the hub for innovators, investors and indeed for industry leaders. In the PropTech Hot Seat today is Eric Gilligan, owner of VRX Architecture and Design. Eric, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Carol. Nice to meet you. Um, so, Eric, you are an architect by background, is that right? Yeah, um, I've been an architect for about uh, 12 years now. Um, started out while I was in college um, working for a local architect in my town and then developed from there um, after many years. Um, Very good. Yeah. Eric, so, Mark, sorry, go on. Where is your town? Uh, Trim in County Mead. Very good, but you're not you're not living in Trim at the moment. You're joining us from Sicily, where you're based. So, right now. Yes, from sunny Sicily. Yeah. Very um, good. Not so, not used to it. Well, well, we're certainly not used to it here. It has been a pretty dismal summer the last month. But um, Eric, you might just tell people about your new app. It's um, something really of interest to us in the immersive technology space. So you might just take us through it. Yeah, sure. Um, basically, um, because I live in Trim, uh, we've got Trim Castle, famous for uh, Braveheart um, and other movies, apparently. Um, so basically, I designed a location-based app um, for the grounds of Trim Castle. So it allows the user to or the visitor to the castle to go open the app on the grounds and walk around freely without the need for scanning or um anything else on the site um i've reconstructed the whole grounds of the castle uh basically so you can go in and out of buildings and um yeah just explore it as it maybe once looked from from my artistic impressions so just, just so we're clear um, on the offering because you know we're seeing a rise in i suppose tourist based um, immersive technologies but what you're doing is that you've actually almost recreated trem castle to what uh, what is that based on is it based on your imagination is it based on historical information um well it's it's partially based on um artistic impressions that were done for 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 the castle itself um there's, there was some online, so I kind of recreated it from that. Um, some from like old ideas of of, of modeling um, medieval spaces. Um, like there wouldn't be much in in line of uh, furnitures, and it'd be all kind of wooden. And well, I'm assuming it would be. Um, so yeah, it was just it was just basically based around just ideas that I had for for the for the whole grand, um, like markets. <laughs> Blacksmith. Sorry. What prompted you? Uh, well, basically, I was, well, you know, I, I kind of, I, I like visiting historical sites, but I, I'm not too keen on on reading all the notice boards around the site. So, uh, yeah, that kind of gave me the idea. But also, when I was in Milan, uh, once I, I done a I done a virtual tour, which was basically the VR headset, which blocks out everything. I, I don't really like it, but um, you you entered into the castle into a room and the VR experience was just based solely in that room and you'd shoot arrows out the window and that was it. And I was thinking, well, that's a waste of 15 euro. N no offense to, to Milan Castle, but um, yeah. So you, you couldn't move freely around. It was like, you know, it was kind of dull. So I, I kind of developed from there. I thought, well, maybe I could do something for Trim Castle because, you know, it's a, it's a big open space. Um, yeah, so I started a few years ago, but uh, since w when I released it first, should I say, um, it, the, the technology wasn't really up to, to speed as to what I, like I, I could open the, the model by scanning notice boards around the site, but I, that's not how I wanted it. I wanted it to just go there, open it, and the model would just appear around you, basically. Very good. So just in terms of the technology used, I think it's interesting to hear your your take on the headsets because one of the trends we're seeing in immersive technologies is that, you know, maybe initially there was the novelty factor around it, which, you know, to be honest, is not necessarily a criticism. You know, there needs to be an impetus for, for adoption of new technologies. But actually the headset has really been quite an impediment for people. So what we're seeing now are innovations trying to... to 
get away without using the headsets, but still giving people an immersive experience, which is difficult through a phone. So you might just talk us through your your process there. Yeah, it does. That's yeah. I, I will probably lean towards the AR headsets when they um, are up to speed and and can use Google uh, geolocation is is what I use for the app. Um, so I think Snapdragon are releasing a headset, an AR headset, which is just like a pair of sunglasses, which which is perfect because um, it, it's it's designed for outdoor space as well. So because I I had it working on a headset before. Um, a Moverio headset, but it was, the the scene was so washed out in the in the daylight. It was it was pointless. Uh, the VR headset obviously wouldn't work because people would fall over into a hole or something, and uh, that I'd be in trouble. <laughs> so yeah, for the for now, I I released it on a uh, mobile device for testing. It's not ideal. It's it's you know I'd like it to be more immersive, um, and I think I probably will once it's released. Uh, go for the headset, but the see-through headset so you can see where you're walking as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's really uh, cool. yeah. technology. And uh, um, apologies yeah. to everybody listening in, we are having some sound some sound issues here, but look, we'll, we'll persevere as best we can. And just back, back to the technology side of it, because um, I, I'm interested in how we can explore the, this immersive experience without the use of a headset. So fine, you're using the mobile version. You know, we found ourselves to our own um, innovation and some of the technologies that we've been trying to implement that actually um, it needs to be exceedingly light to work on mobile. So what what technologies are you using for your test? Um, yeah, well, it, it needs to be very light and because the, the castle grounds was like 100 meters by 100 meters wide. So uh, it was kind of, a lot of um, reducing of materials and and uh, like the quality it wouldn't be tip top, but you know you, you won't notice it on a mobile anyway. So um, the like the, the materials are quite low in resolution just to get it into. It, it works fine apparently. So um, I had a few people test it already. Um, Hundred downloads in the first week, which isn't too bad, I guess. And um, yeah, a couple of people came back to me saying works fine. I was, I was happy enough with that. So, is it working uh, and Android? Uh, sorry, most. is it working on Android and iOS? Uh, not iOS yet because um, I'm not a fan. Of, <laughs> I'm not a fan of Apple uh, products, and I, I, I'm trying to get it onto iOS. I've got the the Mac there, so um, figuring that out because I'm not I'm not like um, a computer genius, <laughs> as we call it. Well. Yeah. well <laughs> to the app store and all it can be challenging and i know that's delays we've run into in the past and i know it's something we hear from other innovators and um, so trim castle is your first project but as i mentioned yeah. there and which might be evident through some of the sound sound issues that we're having today so apologies for anybody who's impacted by that and um, but you're you're actually joining us today from sicily now yeah uh, obviously, I'm from my base in not. I'm not even in Dublin today. I'm recording from the west of Ireland. So from our base here, we'd love to explore some of Sicily. So have you any plans to model any of the of the uh, historic buildings there? Uh, no, <laughs> um, I'm going. I'm going to leave that to the Italians. Um, no, but maybe maybe in the future. Um, like I, I'd love to just do a few more sites around Trim. Um, like there's the yellow steeple, there's a couple of abbeys. Um, it's like it's a quite a historical site, uh, town. So, and um, then moving from there, I'd like to do the Hill of Tara, just because I, I'm a frequent visitor to the Hill of Tara. It's a lovely scenic area. Um, and then maybe a few more sites in, in Ireland before I'd expand into Europe. I, I, I like there is there is obviously lo lovely buildings here, but um, yeah. They're a bit too big for me, I think, alone. You talk, when you talk about Tara, you know, there's a number of sacred sites up around there yeah. as well. So how do you envisage that modelling would work? Because obviously I'm only thinking of the landscape as such, as opposed to any built environment. How do you see that modelling working? Um, well, I, obviously I'm going to, obviously again, look at um, artistic impressions of of like neighboring sites uh, like uh, Navan up in up the north of Ireland um, it's, it's probably based 
like similar to what Tara might look might have looked like back then. So like to be a big fort, uh, etc. And um, on the on the main on the main hill, and then probably a banquet hall or a long hall on the. I think it's the is it the north side of the, the site. I can't remember. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I'm assuming it's just going to be basically a timber structure, and and that's all really. Um, hopefully, get some animation in there and bring it to life again. Um, I, I'm not any modeling that we built of the medieval world. So, are you having to create every asset? You know, if you were modeling something more contemporary, you might be able to pick a chair and and change it around. But I presume from medieval, your choice of assets. Do they exist at all, or are you building everything from scratch? Uh, I wouldn't be built if, if I was to build it from scratch. I'd be, I'd be still building it for another three hundred years. So, uh, no, there's a, there's a great um, asset store on on Unity. So, you know, I'm using a lot of that model. Um, a lot, a lot of the, the modeling itself, like, I think, except for the furniture, is I, I do it myself. So, very good. And your day job is that you're actually delivering. Um, 3D design work to the industry. So are you continuing to work while you're based in Sicily? Oh yeah, yeah, I freelance now. So um, I have a couple of clients in Ireland um, which send me work to do. Uh, it's mostly residential work, um, some commercial work, uh, 3D sometimes. Then I picked up a client here uh, last year um, just remodeling apartments because um, they, they offer like an eco bonus, which is like a 110% um, grant to remodel uh, old old buildings in Sicily, which is, that's why they're actually on break now. So you can't hear them drilling into the walls here. <laughs> so, wow, we must look into that 110% grant. 110%, yeah. We're yeah. struggling so much to, to make relevant the vacant homes and the derelict homes grant that we have. They're so un, unusable by... Yeah by people actually because you have to have all the work done before you draw down and things like that so i must look and see what the model is in sicily and see if there's some learnings for the irish marketplace um but, all yeah i wouldn't I wouldn't, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too familiar with the, the legal work because i can't speak italian yet so um but the, the the company i was working for they had like hundreds hundreds of uh, like apartments and houses to, to renovate it was, it was, it was crazy but then the new government took over and then it went down to 70%. And now I think from next year, it's going to go back up to 110%. So Very good. We're looking to um, any sort of retrofitting or bringing existing buildings back to life. I think we need to be seeking all the inspiration from anywhere in the world that we can to make any schemes usable so that government resources, when they're being allocated, they're actually being allocated properly. Um, and yeah. Eric, what year did you qualify as an architect or when did you do your training? Um, I studied in Leeds uh, in, I qualified in 2010. Yep. Okay. Uh, how, how strong would the digital element or digital design have been kind of in the curriculum back in 2010? Uh, for, for, for in college or? Yeah. Um, well, we, we were kind of forced into, we weren't really allowed to do much hand drawing and stuff like that. We were told, you know, CAD, 3D Max, that's a SketchUp, and um, that was kind of the the bread and butter back then. Yeah, no, I'm just wondering where your your interest in immersive technologies came from, and are you completely self trained? Uh, for three D, yes, I'm self trained. For CAD, actually, yes, I'm self trained on that as well. I've I've done a few small city and guilds courses on, in CAD, but you know that's how to draw a square. I to draw a line, basically. Uh, the rest I, I've self-taught. I, you know, th there's endless amount of, of buttons to press. So I think it'll be a, a an ongoing um, process to learn everything. But then again, with Unity uh, for the for the augmented reality, um, that's self-taught as well from YouTube and you know um, coding. Um, I, I studied coding for like uh, computer programming for two years, but yeah, didn't didn't uh, succeed at that. So, but now I, I love it, which is the problem. So, very good. Anyway. It sounds like the skills just there. I'm sorry. It sounds like the skill set is there. Anyway, um, and just I suppose before we finish up, Eric, 
where do you see kind of the future of architecture uh, crossing over with immersive technologies? Mm, um, well, I think I think for for ideas that architects and engineers have for for the built environment, like um, like a skyscraper, you can you can you can pinpoint it now so accurately. It's it's like you know you just go down, open the app, and there's the building in three D. And because if it was like a skyscraper, it's not going to be too heavy. You can have great detail. Um, you can like explore out all the spaces without without it need to need to be need to be built. Sorry. Um, yeah. So I think for that for that intent and purpose, uh, it's like um, it's fantastic. I think. Um, but for the headsets, I think it's it's more like what I've done with the castle. It's it's kind of like more gamey. Um, I don't really see what else you can use it for in well in architecture, apart from maybe exploring rooms. Yeah. Yeah, I've been exploring the built environment is one of the primary uses we're seeing and um, in this industry for uh, immersive technologies. But what's really interesting is that actually when we give access to the technology to people on the ground, they come up with their own use cases, not coming from a background in technology or immersive technologies, but maybe coming from a background in engineering or building a uh, structural, um, you know, uh, so one of the examples we saw of that was um, there's a main contractor here in Ireland using immersive technologies or using augmented reality for safety on site. And within the day's training and then within a couple of days use, the team on the ground from the building site, the project team, who would never um, really have been exposed to immersive technologies previously, came up with other use cases that I'm not sure an immersive technology developer would have come up with. And this is where I love that, that crossover and the multidisciplinary approach, because generally speaking, they're different skill sets. And so... When when people are immer when they're exposed to new technologies and they know their own workplace well, they know their own domain. They have their own domain uh, expertise and knowledge that actually it can give rise to some really interesting use cases that you know might not have happened before. So I'm really excited to watch this space. I don't. Yeah, think I suppose I'm with the to... like um, mechanical and uh, ventilation and ele electrical, you can you can place all the the pipes and you can see it in 3D. So I suppose like it's a like a 3D blueprint really of, of you know, for future reference as well. It's quite un handy because if I look at that wall there, I, I don't know where the wires are. So, you know, I yeah. guess. It'll be like uh, stud finders will be a thing of the past. We'll be using immersive yeah. technologies for everything. Yeah, but yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right that the headset um, too heavy. It's just not ideal at the moment. So uh, I think we're all sitting waiting for newer, lighter headsets, immersive, or the augmented reality glasses. All of this, we're just waiting in anticipation. Um, but I, I'm also excited to see what you do next. And for people who would like to explore more, that's VRX architecture and design. And you can certainly take a tour of Trim Castle um, and use Eric's app. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Apologies to everybody for some sound quality issues that we did have. Um, and, and we'll do our best to lessen those. But um, that's all we have time for today. My thanks to Eric Gilligan, owner of VRX Architecture and Design. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out all of the other real estate and construction shows on iProperty Radio. Before we go, just a special word of thanks to our sponsor, PropTech Ireland, the hub for innovators, investors and for industry leaders. And thank you indeed for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode of the PropTech Hot Seat here on iProperty Radio.